I need to hear from some of you, okay? Here we go. What should we do? How many knows what should we do? Well, let me finish the question. What should we do when our parents tell us to do something? Let's get a boy here, okay? How about you? That's <laughs> The question, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if you heard the answer. The question was, what should we do when our parents tell us to do something? His answer was, do it. Amen. How quickly should we do it? Yes. Real fast. That's right. I'm sorry. Right that second. That's right. Bam. Everybody say bam. Now, not a big old long space, then sort of bam. But as soon as mom and dad say it, bam. Do what they say. Because not only would they be happy, hopefully, but who else would be happy? That's right. That's right. All right. Now, let's go back to our verse just for a second, which is Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 1. All right. Children, <coughs> obey your parents in the Lord. For this is what? It's right. Now, help me here. If it's not right to be disobedient to your parents, what is it? It's wrong. That's right. Man, you just flowing with answers. You look at my paper. Before we got in here <laughs> if it's not right, it's wrong. It's actually wrong before the Lord to be disobedient to our parents. Because that's what's in the mind. Let's go to our next verse. Come, somebody tell me the first word of that verse. Honor. Honor. Now, you know what the best way is to honor God? What would that be? The best way to honor God? You know that, Ariel? Are they in? Yeah. Got yeah. pretty close. The best way to honor God? Worship Him? That's close. Yes, sir? Obey Him. That's exactly right. The highest form of worship is obedience. Now, if we love God and we please God, the word honor here means to place priority and obedience to them by honoring them. Does it honor God when we know we're doing the wrong thing? No. It honors God when we're doing the right thing. That's right. And that is one of the Ten Commandments, to honor thy father and mother, your mother. And so, if you'll start right there on that obedience thing with your mother and your dad, you'll be all right. What do we have for the contestants here tonight? Okay. Uh, all right, this is a Thanksgiving craft. You put it all together. And you have a put together craft. <laughs> Amen. Right. <laughs> I imagine there's a turkey in there somewhere. It is a turkey. Are you showing me a turkey? Oh, there's a half turkey in there. Okay, that is very helpful. All right, so I think we have them all like this, brethren. Is there a mass confusion over here? Okay. So you're going to give out something that looks like this, right? Okay. Are you ready? Well, let's stand, kids. Thank you for being here tonight. Why don't you thank Mom and Dad. Turn around and thank Mom and Dad for bringing you to church tonight.
by the way, when he was stoned, he was stoned to death, and God raised him up from the dead. Verse 26 says, In journeyings often, in perils of the waters, and perils of robbers, and perils by mine own countrymen, perils by the heathen, perils in the city, perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false brethren, people that pretended to be his brother, but turned out to be false. In weariness and painfulness and watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside these things uh, that are without, that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches. And so let's pray that God would just sort of lead us through this uh, journey here. And what I would like you to leave here with tonight is a framework to transcend. I would like to be able to help all of us learn how to transcend and be more than a conqueror. All right? How would you like to leave here tonight having some sense of how to get above your problems? How many understand what I'm talking about? Amen. Would you wave your hand if you'd like to leave here with some sense of that? Now you're going to have to work at that and, and, and sort of you know, give it a try and not give up. You will get it. And I'm growing in it myself. And uh, that is how I believe that Paul and all of those early disciples were able to deal with the struggles that they went through. Paul having just given us a huge list. So Lord, we love you and we're so thankful that there is a river that flows from deep within. It's that river that gives us the strength. It's that river that gives us the the uh, anointing, that river that sustains us. And we thank you for it, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 All right. Is Brother Doyle back yet? Oh, I guess not. All right, our next slide we dealt with this morning a little bit. And um, actually, we went outside of the PowerPoint. And we actually went to the scripture in Psalms. You don't have to go there. It'd be too much for you. So everybody turn with me to the 61st Psalm. Psalm 61. If you have your Bible. Psalm 61. And I just want to uh, bring you some more clarity. We're talking about when tough times come. We're talking about when you're hoping for a raise and you ended up getting fired. When you went to the doctor's office for just a normal checkup and you found out there's a growth there that you didn't know about. When you, you know, trouble never gives advance warning. There's a struggle. Life happens. Dilemmas take place. And difficulties come out of the blue. In Psalm 61, in verse 1, the scripture says, Hear my cry, O God, and tend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. And we're going to be going after this to slide 12. Okay? If you can get that all ready. Now, I gave you just a couple of definitions. You might want to write these down if you're a note taker. Otherwise, you have a perfect memory and never forget anything. But this word overwhelmed... I looked it up again. 
before church tonight. Number one, it means to envelop. The word envelop. Meaning that when trouble comes, everything seems to just, it takes over. Also, the word darkness and to languish and to faint. These are words that describe being overwhelmed when life is bigger than you can handle. And then he said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that word higher means to rise up, to be lofty, to be uplifted, to lift. A state of being on a higher plane. If you're only going to write one thing down, write this down. A state of being on a higher plane. That's what leads me to a rock that is higher. Higher. A state of being on a higher plane. In other words, the psalmist is saying, when my heart was overwhelmed within me, lead me to a rock that is higher or a state of being on a higher plane. Lead me to a higher plane. Yes. That's exactly what we're talking about. Yes. Because we are children of God, we can rise higher in the spirit on a higher plane. Yes. Because of Christ in us. And that's some very powerful stuff. And we see in this scripture, lead me, the word lead there means to guide. You can't get there on your own. It's not a trip in the park. You need to be led or guided by God. Lead me, he said. Maybe it would be good if you did go to that, if you can. Psalm 61, verse 2. Lead me, guide me to a rock on a higher plane. Remember we talked about pulling back on the stick. And the airplane going higher. And the rats died because they couldn't live past X thousand feet. And when life is overwhelming you, it's time to go higher. I, I, I'm going to say that again. And what I want you to say when I finish saying that is amen, okay? What was it I said? <laughs> when life is overwhelming you, it's time to go higher. Yeah. Woo Don't just sit there and get beat up. Go a little higher. Let's try it one more time. Don't just sit there and get beat up and get depressed and get mad and wonder where God is. Go up higher. Yeah. All right. Leave me. God. Now that means the letting, getting a hold of God, getting in the presence of God, and letting Him lead you. And we're going to refer back to that in just a few minutes. And I, I want you to remember that. Now in John chapter 16, verse 33, we talked about this a little bit. When the scripture tells us uh, in verse 33, it's the next slide. I know it takes a little while to do all that. These things have I spoken unto you, that if in me you might have peace. It's slide 12. In me you might have peace. Everybody say peace. peace. When you're in Christ and you're walking with the Lord, he said you have peace. In me. And Okay, Brother Glass, we're going to need your help up there. I need it right now if you could. Thanks. In the world, you shall have tribulation. But now he gives us a uh, directive. What, we're do what are we supposed to do when we have tribulation? What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to be of good cheer. Okay, what I, that's the, I need the PowerPoint. There we go. Thank you very much. Let's read it together. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me 
you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation. The world that you're in, you have my peace with you. But you also have something else. You've got tribulation with you too, which means pressure and trouble. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. I've overcome it. I got over it. I came over. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. God's peace is simultaneous if you open up to it and you apply the things I'm going to share with you. You can transcend that trouble. You'll still have the trouble, but you'll be on top of it instead of under it. You won't be overwhelmed. You'll be underwhelmed. You'll have God's peace in it. Now we learned today that God told us not to be afraid and not to be troubled. It didn't just tell us. It was a commandment, a directive. And I hope we get to that before we're done here tonight. And this is, how do you exhaust this kind of subject? So this week, you're going to resist Remember, resist the temptation. Brother Dino, come on out, would you? Resist the temptation to get agitated, to get troubled. Remember, to get afraid, we're going to resist the temptation because there's going to be some hassle this week. That's because, there you are, thank you. You were here and we couldn't see you. Amen. All right. And so, you are going to resist, everybody say resist, resist, the temptation to get out of peace and to be troubled, agitated, angry, etc., etc., etc. Amen? Amen? All right, now we're going to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8. And this is where the transcendency takes place. Who shall separate us or where we see it? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Verse 35. Shall tribulation, shall distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword. Now follow this. Watch this. He says none of these things can separate you from the love of God. That means you can be experiencing these negative experiences, but still be simultaneously experiencing God's love. Yes. Yes, you can. Trouble does not mean God left. God is still there even though you have trouble. Pressure. Difficulty. So, there's love to be experienced yes. while you're in the trouble. If you don't get this, you're not going to get transcendence. Right. Right. The idea, again, as I compared it to John 16, that, or John, uh, yeah, 16, verse 31, whatever it was. 33, thank you. Simultaneous. Tribulation in the world, but God's peace in Him. Yes. Simultaneously experiencing trouble, yet peace. And in Romans, he said, these things can't separate you from the love of God. So we and I, you and I, are to be experiencing God's love right. even when we're going through this tribulation, distress, persecution, etc., etc. Did somebody say junk? Because it is junk. It's all the junk we got to deal with in the world. Now we tend to get discouraged. We tend to get agitated. We tend to get annoyed. Can I get an amen to any of that? In other words, these things that agitate us, these things that annoy us, these things that cause us to be afraid, that cause us an, uh, anguish. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Those things are the things that are supposed to be 
helping us die out to self and our control and surrender to God and let Him have control. In other words, the sheep being slaughtered is our flesh nature, our control, us being in charge. Our habits, our weaknesses, killing us all day long on this side, in our flesh, on this side, we're feeding from the love of God. Notice the next verse, verse the next slide, verse 37, please. Nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. I taught you earlier, just for your remembrance, if we're more than a conqueror, that means we're not a conqueror. We're more than that. This isn't something you just try to do on your own, try to get over it. You know how people, loving people that mean well says, well, you just need to get over it. No, I don't need to get over it. I need to get above it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need to get above it. If you just try to get over it, you're just going to stay miserable. But being more than a conqueror, through him, through him, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Guide me through him, getting in God's presence. Here comes agitation. Here comes trouble. Here comes disappointment. Here comes temptation. Now go through him and be more than a conqueror. And you know what the answer is, I think. What are we? If we're not conquerors, what are we? We're transcenders. Now to transcend means to go above. This is what I believe Paul and the rest of them understood how to deal with trouble. By not being separated from the love of God through agitation and anger and bitterness, but staying connected through Him going up to the rock that is high. You see that? That just seems like a clear picture to me, but I think I'm seeing confusion or I don't know what, maybe just plain time. So, he then goes on to say, For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor power, angels, principalities, powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor death, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So there's no situation that can happen that will separate you from being sustained by God's love unless you let those other attitudes in there and control right. you. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. And God's strength can help you not give in to that. Amen. You don't have to be in a bad mood. Right. That's why it's going to be imperative in order to catch what I'm talking about and experience it. Learning how to resist the temptation to do what we've done over and over again. And that is to be troubled and afraid. Come on. Great. Here's the number one. Number one. There's two elements to this transcending. There may be more. I've just discovered two. And I'm taking you now to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This is new territory. With seven minutes to go until it's eight o'clock. Here is step number one. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. And here it is in the King James Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Everybody read the rest of it. And the God of all. Everybody say it. All Everybody say it, please. All He's the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. That means there's not a situation 
you can be going through that God doesn't have comfort to help you in it. As soon, who said that's right? Who said that? Okay. That's right. Thank you. And it's true. There's not a trial. There's not a test. There's not a difficulty. There's not a pressure. That God doesn't have enough comfort to take the edge off. And when you get in God's comfort, you just went up a couple of notches in transcendency. If you're angry and agitated, you're stuck. But if you get into God's comfort, he has, how much comfort does he have? All. All comfort. And so, instead of getting agitated, we pray and get in God's present, presence that has all comfort. Now, comfort means, and if you're a note taker, write this down, if this is something you want to become a student of, it comes from the word consolation. That's right. Or to be consoled. To be consoled. When God comes into your life, you're being killed all the day long. You're being shown where you're too much leaning on yourself. That's the death, the dying. We're going to see more of that as we go through this. But you've come to God for comfort. Yes. All right? That means to be consoled. To be soothed. Write that word. Soothed. When you're going through difficulty, God has soothing for you. I can't get that mad. I can't get that frustrated. I can't get that agitated. I can only get that as I seek God yes. in prayer yes. and getting God's presence. Yes. Yes. You get that? Yes. And when I start to experience God's presence, I'm being soothed and consoled. The temptation to be anxious, angry, and agitated is now being displaced by God's soothing comfort helping me in the situation. Now some folks are so demanding, they won't get the comfort, they demand for God to move the thing that's there. And sometimes, pardon me, no way to transcend when you do that. It's got to be on your terms. That's not going to work. Some things stay for a while. Some things don't change. I wish they did. I'm sure Paul said, wow, after one of those beatings, man, I, I don't want any more of that. Well, here comes number two. And number three, number four. If you love me, why are you doing this? I love you. That's why now I'm comforting you. So when you just hold out for your way, you're being obstinate. And you're robbing yourself of God's comfort that can soothe you even when you are in pain. Yes. The world takes pills. The Christian takes a hold of Jesus. And God gives us comfort. Now let's look at the next verse, please. This God, who's the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in, what's that next word? All, all our tribulation. All of our tribulation. Every bit of our tribulation, He comforts us in if we are paying attention. If you seek God, if you open up to God and let God flow in in all of your troubles and all of your tribulation, God is going to have comfort for you. And as you get comfort, you
you start to ascend. So, let me start again on that verse. Who comforteth us in all of our tribulation, that we, now here's the best part, in the way I see it, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any way or in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. In other words, if I give, if I get comfort, comfort I can give comfort. Yes. Yes. So if you refuse to be comforted, you just get agitated, you're just giving out agitation to everybody. That's called a pity party. Two things wrong with a pity party. Not many people come, and nobody brings gifts. And so, better than a pity party, because that doesn't change anything, just makes you miserable, get comforted by God, and then you'll be able to comfort others. Let's keep going, verse 5. Now look at this again. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. We do have suffering. There is dif disappointment. There are challenges. It is difficult. But with all of that, I also have consolation abounding by Christ. Meaning, for whatever difficulty I'm dealing with, there is a corresponding comfort yes. to go with it. If I dip in and take hold of what God has for me. Yes. You cannot go through a trial without comfort being available if you'll go get it. Right. Right. If you'll have a prayer life yes. and experience the presence of God. How many millions of times have I gone to God in pain and concern and agitation frustration and as he begins to soothe me and comfort me and help me then I'm transcending I wish I had time maybe we ought to let everybody else go and then they're really hungry to stay and I'll tell you yeah I got this Tabasco to go because I'd really like to tell you the second part. You get consolation, and then you get the next thing, and you're on top of the situation. You're not all freaking out and agitated. Can we go to the second to the last slide? Would a slide number help you? I want to just review what we did this morning because it's so very important. Even if it doesn't help you, I'm going to tell you because it helped. Okay, here. Well, that's, that's not in the PowerPoint. It's slide. Okay. This is the amplified version. Watch this again, and forgive me for repeating it, but repetition is a very powerful way of teaching. Did, as a school teacher, didn't you use repetition to get it in? Because you only get it in a certain level, but repetition gets it in deeper and deeper and deeper. So please bear with me. I'm more interested in you letting this sink into your ears than I am getting over it and then doing something else. I'm interested in you getting this. Yeah. Peace I leave with you, my own peace, I now give and bequeath to you. Yeah. I'm giving you my peace. I'm sharing the peace I have with you. When you have God's peace, and this is the second element. It's walking in God's peace. Not only the consolation, that has healing properties to it. The second thing is the sustenance or the sustaining grace of God's peace. They had peace in the tribulation. 
Remember Jesus said, in the world you'll have tribulation. In the church, cheer. I, uh, have overcome the world. In the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Peace I leave with you. My own peace now I give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives, do I give unto you. What does that mean, not as the world gives? The world gives and it takes it away. He said, I'm not going to take it away. Do not. Everybody say, do not. Do not. Let your hearts be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Worry, fretting. Oh, God, help me. Give in to that so I can have peace with my tribulation. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing, everybody say allowing, stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. If he says stop doing it, you can. You may not want to, but you can. How many of you have got some pressures in your life? Resist all of that agitation, Intimidation, unsettledness, back up a slide, agitation. Could you back up a slide? Thank you. Uh, disturbedness. If you can get in God's comfort and get soothed, let God soothe you. Don't just try to do it yourself by humming. just give you a sore throat if you do it long enough. Call on the name of Jesus. He has all comfort. Everybody say all comfort. All and hold on to your peace. And in fact, enjoy more peace. And if you partake of God's comfort, then you will walk in God's peace through a prayer life. You will transcend above those the sword, the pestilence, the persecution, the agitation, the trouble, and you'll be walking on a higher plane above the problem instead of being controlled by the problem. Now, why does Satan show up when bad stuff is happening? Because if he can get you agitated, and angry and disturbed and all upset. That's Satan's job, and he's got people that will help him do it. And sometimes you just got to say to some of those people, I've heard enough. You don't have to sit there and take it. Now we have to be Christian and we have to be polite. But you know, when people are just trying to get at you, it's perfectly in order to say, I really don't want to hear this anymore. Stop. So, when Satan is trying to agitate you, watch this. He puts you in a weakened condition when you get agitated and disturbed. You're now in a weakened position. And it's there that he starts opening up when well, you can do this, you can do that for relief. Why don't you just give in to all of this? Why don't you just quit? Separate yourself from the love of God? But if you stop allowing yourself to do that, you're in a position of strength. So staying on the rock that is higher than I through God's comfort and God's peace, and you're in a position of strength. Agitated, ticked off, irritated, et cetera, et cetera, discouraged, puts you in a place of weakness. Amen. Hope you got it. Amen. We got lots more. Uh, and another piece to the box. Let's stand together. We're so glad to have our life group friends. Brother Cooper is someday going to let me know who your names are. Amen. And good to have Mary and Grace with us tonight. Amen. Thursday night, I invite you back.
A lesson on prayer in adult class. Young adults, what are they going to be talking about? Do you know this week? Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Young adults. Children will have. And there's Sister Dominique back there. This is the one service she gets to come to because she works, and not just her, others, with our children on Thursday nights and on Sunday mornings. And we're glad that you're here tonight, Dominique. We love you. You sacrificed a lot. To help our children, and we appreciate it immensely. We want you to be refreshed and renewed, and I'm concerned about all the time you spend over there and miss out. Pastor Sean, would you be so kind to lead us in a time of prayer? I'm going to find us a microphone. Somewhere. Okay. Sunday school teachers, we got your CDs from Brother Hal. If you're interested in the spiritual warfare thing that's going on in Annapolis, there's a schedule of what's going to be happening. And uh, God bless you, love you. And uh, my friend is here tonight, by the way. This is her first Sunday night. This is Alexis. And I can remember her name because it's a lot like my car without the uh. Alexis Nazario, am I pronouncing that right? Close enough? Her husband and, and her are Bible study uh, students with me with, from Grace and Glory. And he had to be on a project for school tonight. And this is their first time coming to church on Sunday night. And uh, I want to thank all of you that have welcomed them and loved them and helped them. She talked to me about that a little bit this week and how much she appreciates that. We start separating from the love of God. Right. Now we're miserable. Right. So when you go into the hissy fit, when you go into the agitation, when you go into those other things we talked about this morning, you are separating yourself from the love of God. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to pray and get in touch with the Lord. Amen. Peace on this side, trouble on this side. Love on this side, trouble on this side, I can experience both at the same time. Amen. Our homes, Lord Jesus, and help us to recognize and understand that even though there may be difficulties, we can rise above them, transcend them, Lord Jesus, and live in that place of victory, God. I thank you for it, God. Hey, Pastor Jesus. Sean, not to interrupt you, but what did you think about I don't want to interrupt everything, and I'm very willing to hear you say we can't do that. What if I invited everybody here tonight to come back Thursday night, and we just meet again here so I can take it to the next level. We can actually practice together with the Spirit of God transcending. Because the following Sunday is going to be a life group, or should we just wait till the next Sunday night together, which would be two weeks from now. I need your advice on Maybe we I'm just talk sure about it. I'm the authority on this. It's a whole but, uh, big trick question, isn't it? <laughs> no, I, that's, I think it makes perfect sense. Well, we'll talk about that, and, and maybe we'll just all together meet right here and practice transcending and do it together so that we can learn how to walk in the Spirit. May I say, Wednesday, fast day for everybody. Tuesday night to Wednesday night. How many will fast? If you want to transcend, let's do some fasting together. All right? Amen to that? Just a day. Water only. And would you do your, your uh, I urge you to do your Connect 50. Amen? What is that? I'm sorry? What is it? Caribbean dinner and you bought the, the stuff. I guess there was 111 prepaid dinners, 22 same day dinners, 133 dinners were sold and $1,995 was paid. Yeah. Hallelujah. $2,000. That's awesome and for the Mitchell family and everybody else that 
helped with that. That's fantastic. And these funds are going to help people in uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and uh, which we do every year. That'll help a whole lot. Thank you so very much. And that's awesome. Two thousand dollars was raised. Praise God for that. Have a lovely week. And don't be surprised if the enemy shows up. But immediately go get your comfort and get your peace. Amen. Would you high five about twenty-five people? And if one of them's bald-headed, hit them on top of the head and tell them we're going to transcend this week together. God bless you. Sunday school teachers, come get these CDs.